You guys better watch out. <laughs> Sorry, I just really wanted to make that joke. I don't know why, I was just thinking about that joke in the shower and I was like, I'm gonna make that joke when I start recording James Bond today. And hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my next James Bond film on the James Bond journey. We are going back in time actually for this James Bond reaction. We are watching Never Say Never Again. This one came out before A View to a Kill, but I decided to watch it after A View to a Kill because I wanted to do all of Roger Moore's movies in order first and then I could jump to Sean Connery before getting into the new James Bond. So this movie was not made by the main people who make Bond films. This is made by a completely different production company I believe and I'm very curious to know if Sean Connery came back because he wanted to play James Bond or if he came back because he wasn't making enough money and this is almost like a paycheck film for him. I've also heard that this movie is basically just Thunderball reskinned, which is fun because I liked Thunderball, but I'm hoping that this movie adds a little bit extra. I don't know. I I don't know whether to be excited or cautiously optimistic for this movie. I think I'm staying on the cautiously optimistic side. I'm hoping it's a decent film. I don't know what the reviews are for this film. It could be good. It could be cool to see Sean Connery back. I'm excited to see Sean Connery back, but I am very wary about this film because I don't know how good it's going to be. I don't know if this film is just going to be like a cash grab. But yeah, I am watching it because Sean Connery is in it. It is technically, I searched up James Bond movies in order. This this movie does come up as long as well as the movie a long time ago now called Casino Royale but I'm not gonna watch that one on the channel just because that was kind of more of a parody film and it just I know the reviews for that one suck and so I just don't want to watch it I'm sorry I just don't want to watch it but yeah before we get into this reaction let me do the lighting or I guess the mood so let me set the mood and then we can get to the reaction Boop! nice 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 mood has been set if I was gonna choose a color with my color light which I don't have right now I would have gone red and if you like to check out more of my reactions you can head over to my patreon with uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early there are also two exclusive patreon movies a month that you guys on patreon get to choose so thank you so so much if you check it out now let's get back to the video also side note my patreon will be free in June if you sign up in May you will have an extra month free in June because I'm going on vacation so yeah if you'd like to have a free month on my patreon you can sign up for patreon in May and get a free month in June yeah I don't really have anything to say about this movie anymore I don't know anything about it I've never I've never heard anything about this movie I'm excited to see Sean Connery back though he'll be pretty old though I feel like going into this so I don't actually know how well he's gonna handle all the action because James Bond is pretty heavy pretty heavy on the action if you know what I mean so yeah let's just get into it though I hope you enjoy my reaction to never say never again And there's no opening title sequence. Ah, oh, like there's no like da 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 gun barrel sequence, man. Oh, I like this guy. And this came out the same year as Octopussy. And Octopussy, I thought was amazing. So this has a lot of expectations to live up to. Nice punch. It's actually pretty cool to see Sean Connery back though, I won't lie. But I won't let that influence how I think about this movie. Oh, ziplining Sean, I like it. Let them finish their chess game first. James Bond. They're probably bad people, but you could have waited for them to finish their chess game. Like, that's a little rude. Ooh. Oh. Oh, nice. <laughs> over, movie's over, James Bond dies. Not too shabby, sir. The dead 007 dead. That was a training exercise. Okay, okay. You've forgotten the landmine on the Black Sea Beach. Correction, sir. I lost both legs. I did not die. You were a man. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Caused by eating too much red meat and white bread and too many dry martinis. No, you can never have enough martinis. Shrublins? You got it. Is that Money Penny? Hello, new Money Penny. You got an assignment, James? Yes. Yes, Money Penny. Yeah, new money penny. Spiritual enlightenment. 
I'd like you to see the irrigologist at four. I like that they're acknowledging that James five, Bond is old. I like it. I was worried that they wouldn't and that he would just be doing things that young James Bond would be doing. This person is probably evil because she's wearing all black. Wait, that's kind of sweet. It's kind of sweet. Oh, this must be like a Spectre hideout or something, or just a secret agent hideout. And Central America to promote insurgency and revolution. Fortunately. Ah, uh, cat, 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 cat. Is this guy Blofeld? By the result Is Max Blofeld? Government forces on an equal basis. In matters of death. I want Blofeld to be bald, though. I don't like it when Blofeld has hair. I, <laughs> I don't know why it bugs me so much, but it does. Near London, I have chosen number 12 to have the responsibility of... She must be number 12. Hello, number 12. Of Captain Jack Pitachi. Yeah, okay, so this happened in Thunderball, I think, right? Where they had a captain and he got shot by himself and then the plane going into the water. That's it. Okay, now just move mm. back on the couch for me, please. Oh, I want that. I want that. Strain at the base of the spine. You know, there is a more beneficial therapy for a man's lower back. <laughs> Bod. I thought I'd surprise you, James. You oh, surprise! Really not a great spot to be hiding it. Gets into Jack's eye. Oh, yes, number 12. This guy looks so familiar. <laughs> you know, I'd watch. I'd just watch and eat some popcorn. Like, wow, what a great time. Nursey will give baby his candy. Mm -hmm. I hate needles. What's he gonna do with the... Oh, man. What is happening right now? Why does she have binoculars? Like, okay. Oh, it's night vision. Okay, I was about to say. Binoculars aren't gonna help. Haha, <laughs> what a shot. Yes, always check under the mattress. Ayo! This guy is waiting for the right time. That was good, that was good. Oh. Don't you think this is a super dangerous machine then? No, like, oh my God, he's made of iron. This guy never skips chest day, that's for sure. <laughs> broken nose. Oh, you got a broken stomach. Get tripped, son. Oh, get kicked, son. What the heck? That rope is so sharp. Or oh, that knife was so weak. One or the other. Here's Johnny. <laughs> Urine specimen, James Bond. Oh, that is so disgusting. The man died from pee on his face. He was so in shock that he had pee on his face that he decided to die. Yeah, this actor is so familiar. What is he in? I feel like I've seen him in something. Information is not authenticated within eight seconds. The base will be sealed. Really? What if the... Okay. Dummy warheads will be replaced by W-80 thermonuclear device. Oh my god. It's that easy to change? Oh wow. There needs to be more put in place to stop this from happening. More safety measures. <laughs> That's actually kind of a sick miniature, and that was a really good looking shot. Oh wait, this is actually kind of sick. The flames at the back are super tiny though. That was kind of awesome, but there are definitely easier ways to kill someone. One of which being just to shoot them. She 
She is kind of cool. I won't lie. She is kind of cool. But that was the most strange kill I've ever seen in my life. Like, why did she think that was going to work? It worked, I guess. So she was right. But why did she think that was going to work? Why not just shoot, shoot him? Hello, Minimum Cruise Height. Damn, we lost him. So instead of letting the plane in the water like in Thunderball, they're just actually controlling the missiles themselves. Well, cool. The fish are netted. He, he responded so fast. Well, go, the fish are netted. <laughs> I am Supreme like, Commander. <laughs> wait for the other guy to finish talking first. Your weapons of deterrence did not deter us from our objective. Why is he telling everyone this? What is the point? It can be avoided by paying a tribute oh, to okay. our organism. This is why. That makes sense. To not nuclear warheads. How is this possible? Up to this point, because you have no safety precautions. Business, James. Welcome home. Are we not going to get any cue? I'm missing. I'm missing my cue action. They're the Japanese. They're putting up an air screen a mosquito couldn't get through. Our concern is that the war. I don't know. Mosquitoes are pretty wily. They can get through quite a lot. Could have used a false eye. Oh, do come along, Bond. He is coming along. That is the most logical. However, improbable. Whatever that, you know that Sherlock Holmes quote. I was trying to do it, but I forgot about it. But think about that quote. That's what I was trying to say. This is a one-way mirror, so we can watch this. That's kind of creepy, dude. Valuable thing I have ever possessed. Really? Except you. <laughs> he saved it. He saved it. He saved it in the end. That's good. It seemed like they really loved each other. And then he said that. And now I'm thinking that she's just putting up an act because she's scared for her life. Oh, come on, Q. Come on, Q. Come on, Q. Nice to know even old Q can surprise one of you double O's. Algernon. Q, 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 Q. Unlimited resources, air conditioning, 28 flavors of ice cream in the restaurant. Oh, worth it. The thing to work properly, I'll ship it out to you. Wait a minute. We're gonna get a cool motorbike in this movie. It looks like a watch, but it's really a laser. Keeps perfect time. But I made a watch joke at the start of this video. I didn't even know. Oh, I'm basically a genius. I hope we're gonna have some gratuitous sex and violence. I certainly hope so too. <laughs> He's very blunt. The Bahamas flag has yellow and black on it, and that reminds me of the billionaires. What are you hoping to catch? Something about <laughs> you. 290 pounds with brown eyes. Oh, wait, <laughs> wait. Oh, she actually said it. <laughs> I can't believe she said that. That's so cheesy. Catch you later, perhaps. Right. <gasps> it's Mr. Bean! It's Mr. Bean! Oh my god, I love Mr. Bean. Read my name across the harbor. <laughs> oh god, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not used to hearing him talk. I'm not used to hearing him say anything. What's the score with Largo? Who is highly visible in these parts. <laughs> Enormous the game. My favorite James Bond movie just because Mr. Bean's in it. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I can't believe he's in this movie. What the heck? I would just like Mr. Bean's adventures. I know he did like a Johnny English thing. Those aren't very good though. I've seen them. Oh. What happened? Yes, but my martini's still dry. My name's James. Hello, James. High five for that line. That was good. What brings you to Nassau, James? I'm fishing. They're still oh, holding hands. Guys, you don't have to hold hands anymore. Scuba gear! Dude, I hope she harpoons him. One should always be relaxed. Is it far to the reef? Ooh, the camera work there. Jeez. Imagine the guy driving the boat. He's just listening to all of this. Like, oh, I hate this job. I hate this job. <laughs> oh, what is that, a bomb? Oh, it's a tracking device. Might be a bomb as well. Oh. Or 
it's a shark summoner. Put that in the shark's mouth like in Jaws and blow it up. Oh, okay, or just blast it with air. That works too. <laughs> Sorry, not today, shark. <laughs> Let me just close the door on you. <laughs> no guests allowed. Were they controlling the sharks? I'm confused. I thought that was just maybe sending out like waves basically into the water and the sharks were being summoned by these waves you know so it almost imitated like fish swimming but it's like they were being like remote controlled or something like what the heck hey! oh she caught him and oh, she said catch you later oh that's so cool that looks like a bomb that literally looks like c4 I love her outfit though. It's kind of cool. I like James Bond with the overalls. He should just wear that the rest of the movie. Ah, Mr. Bond, I finally tracked you down. Small faucet here. Haha, <laughs> Mr. B. Oh, he went to her, her room. He definitely went to her room. Gotcha. Get out. Felix, not bad. Ah, I was wondering what he was throwing a ball at them for. What are you gonna do with this bike? I won't know until I test it. It's gonna be your ass, James. We have the bike. I am so excited. We better have a cool bike chase. That's right. He was her brother. Well, there's the man. And she portrayed her brother, or she is just scared for her life. You serve men here. But of course, some men more than others. <laughs> And you would be less than those others. <laughs> Heart, please. Well, uh, perhaps we should. Uh... He just starts punching. Yes, he's a very generous man, Mr. Largo. Okay. Yes. I bet James Bond's hands are the roughest hands in the world, like sandpaper. Such is life. And she has been charmed. <laughs> Easy. He does not work here. Why is she happy about this? I would be in a state of shock. Better wait for you. No, Nicole. You go back to the villa. I actually love number 12's outfits. They are really cool. I love the red and black that she always has on. That would be the scariest thing in the world. But to say this, that, that lady just looked at him for an extended period of time. I hate to think what you mean by harm. Vodka on the rocks for me. Yeah. What? What? So lame, James Bond. Your sense of humor is delicious. What's your brother up to these days? I didn't find it that funny. I'm sorry. <coughs> Bond, you suck. Oh, this is so. This is cheating. It's a level of pain. Rather like life. We continue. Oh, this is actually kind of cool game. Danger level. Don't get shocked. You're really struggling right now, Bond. You have to time that last new carefully. Excuse me. Why would you make a game where fifty percent is dangerous? That sounds a little bit irresponsible. Yes. Good. It means that he could die, right? Because the pain's gonna be so high and he also would lose so much money. Even if he did live, he would lose so much money. But James Bond is going to win this one. It's pretty close, it's pretty close. Nice. Oh, Bond is really winning. Oh, yes. He has no more nukes. Use your nuke. Use your nuke. It seems I was underestimated not, you. Was he not getting electrocuted? James Bond fell out of his chair at 65%. He was at 80%. Is this guy made of... I was going to say aluminum foil, but that's pretty weak. So, titanium. Is this guy made of titanium? Your brother's dead. <gasps> Keep dancing. <laughs> oh, she didn't know. Oh, 
I love the music with the dance with him telling her this stuff. That's actually a really cool little moment. I'm going to pick up Jack. No, that's not possible. Jack phoned earlier to say he'd been delayed again. Ah, uh, he's still trying to keep up this front. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was a fake. It was a phony. It was a fraud the whole time. That's awesome. Nicole? What the heck was that? A demon? Nicole. Oh, that was actually a little bit of horror in James Bond. A little scariness. Oh, the motorbike of dreams and destiny. Oh my god, that was awesome. Don't touch him, he's mine! Why? You're not doing very well killing him. Oh, looks like you're trapped. But James Bond is never trapped. Oh. Never mind, it looks like he is trapped. Oh, and go now, go now, go now! Oh, it's so epic! Oh. Oh. <laughs> you see other cars are ramp. How did that even work? Who knows? I also realize they don't have like the actual James Bond theme song in this movie. Oh, that makes me so sad. This is actually a pretty good chase too. Oh, what's that noise? Oh my God! Get clotheslined. <laughs> the pants are so cool. She looks like a pirate, like a hip pirate. <laughs> Ahoy, James Bond. <laughs> well, to be perfectly honest, there was this girl in Philadelphia. <laughs> in fact, I was going to put you in my memoirs as number one. <laughs> oh, it's the exploding pen. Just remember. It's against service policy for agents to give out endorsements. <laughs> that was actually pretty funny. She could definitely shoot him again if she wanted to before she dies. Oh, yeah, she's going to. Oh, my God. Oh my god, Felix wasn't joking when he said it blew up in his face. That she exploded from the inside out. Good show, James. <laughs> Q actually he was just came watching. Through, didn't he? he was just watching and just like, yeah, if James Bond dies, he dies, you know, whatever. One day, someone just has to make the butler kill James Bond, you know, like the butler's helping them and put on a robe and then stab. Do you think they would have thought of that by now? So, um, a drink? Vodka martini. Shaken, not stirred. Well, if it's that big, let's hope it doesn't blow up in your face. <laughs> I think it's gonna blow up in his face, literally. No, don't go in the dance room because he will see you in the dance room. Oh man, they're in the dance room. He definitely knows. He definitely knows. He looks right at the camera. For two very good reasons. One, because I'm hoping to provoke a reaction. Yeah, and two, because I'd like to kiss you. I always wanted to. <laughs> the reaction has been provoked. Oh my god, he's gonna break the windows. Is he gonna see Bond? False alarm. False alarm. All crew return to He knows, he knows, he knows. Bond, you have a limited time. <laughs> it's like a fort the fortress yet the attack at the start of the film. You home. My princess. Oh, the lighting there? I like it. That belonged to Napoleon's Empress. I dare you to break it. I hate you. I hate you. Oh, this man is so weird. <laughs> oh, I don't mean no. 
I'm glad it broke. I'm glad it broke. <laughs> this isn't a great situation to be in. Feet in Washington, D.C. And number two. That's pretty cool. No. Why would you even tell him in the first place? There's always a chance that Bond can escape. You've you've seen him escape many things in this movie. Goodbye, Domino. Nice knowing you, Domino. That is so awesome. I'm gonna get a cool horse ride sequence. There's the other missile. Okay, at least it's water there. At least that guy's alive. That man did not deserve that. He's just carrying a giant sack. Like, let him live his life. These people, on the other hand, all deserve to perish. This will be pretty awesome. I can already tell. I don't even know what happened there, but they fell over, so good job, Bond. What was that guy thinking? What was that guy thinking? He's so dumb. Jump! Oh, it's like they were going to heaven for a second. Okay. Oh, wait, that's so awesome. Felix, Felix, Felix. This is M. We've cracked the code for disarming the warheads. Congratulations, M. You're unscathed. I'd like to offer you lunch at my club. Over. Wow, lunch at the club. What a reward. Your pendant. Give it to me. Is it a map, do you think? Right where the oil fields begin. Easy. Easy money. Why did he feel the need to give her that? Like, I feel like that was very, that was a very unnecessary gift. Is <laughs> it in case he forgot where he, <laughs> where he stashed the bomb? You equipped with the new XT7Bs. That's top secret. <laughs> He's James Bond. Jetpack, jetpack. What am I looking at right now? May I ask you guys? It's like an uncool jetpack. You know, like, it works. It just doesn't look cool. It just looks like a cage that flies. This really does remind me of the Sean Connery era. Like, Roger Moore had some goofy gadgets, but Sean Connery's gadgets, like, when they were goofy, they were goofy. And this reminds me of that, and I really like it. <laughs> Felix and Cave Bond. Because he's in a cave. What is he wearing right now as well? Dude, get a better outfit. That is a really cool set. We now possess. Huh? Kovac. They're gonna blow up this beautiful place. James Bond's gonna take off this statue's head that's probably been here for thousands of years. That was a really good shot. Oh my god, they got a SWAT team now. Armed and ready. This guy needs to stop shooting unless he wants to die. Like, his boss is gone, he can stop shooting. He's probably not getting paid enough to die on the job. Oh! How are you gonna get through now, son? Oh! Felix, that's a cool gun. Oh wow, I love the colored explosions. It reminds me of You Only Live Twice. 
Oh, uh, please. Go into the well from the helicopter? Oh, yeah. Oh. He actually just jumped in. Oh, nice. Take him down, take him down, take him down. Oh, the guy has a knife. Watch out. Nice. He doesn't have the knife, and now you stab him. Oh. You just take off his goggles. That works, too. Why didn't you just... Why did he do that? Why didn't he just stab him with the knife that he dropped? Or take out his oxygen or something. Why are you letting him come back? Ooh, get run over, get run over, get run over. Harpoon. I've wanted a harpoon. I've been waiting for a harpoon this entire film. Oh. Oh. Okay. Dude, the hair floating in the background was kind of epic. Oh, it's disarmed now? It's disarmed now? Good job, Bond. That, that was pretty easy. Okay, yeah, it's, it was disarmed. That seemed insanely easy. Who is this? There's always someone who tries to kill Bond at the end of his movies. At least the Sean Connery movies. It's gonna be Mr. Bean! It's gonna be Mr. Bean! Ah, the return of Mr. Bean! Rowan Atkinson! of the civilized world! Never again. Never? Never. Never say never again. Never again. <laughs> he had to do that. He had to do that. And that was my reaction to Never Say Never Again, the 1983 James Bond film, but not in the normal James Bond universe, starring Sean Connery back as James Bond, Kim Bassinger, Barbara Carrera, Claus Maria, Claus Maria Brandor, and Max von Sydow. Oh, and Rowan Atkinson. How can you forget about Rowan Atkinson as Nigel, Mr. Mr. Bean himself in this film? I literally could not believe it. I almost jumped out of my chair in pure joy and happiness that he was in this film. I thought that movie was decent. It wasn't my favorite Bond film, wasn't my least favorite Bond film, and it's not my least favorite Sean Connery film, which I, I was actually surprised by. I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this film, although it's not a perfect movie by any means, and I think there are a lot of problems with it, but there were definitely moments I enjoyed. It didn't feel weird going back to Sean Connery, and I think this movie did a good job of kind of capturing Sean Connery in this film. I think he did a way better job like I think his performance in this movie is way better than like Diamonds Are Forever and I feel like that's because Diamonds Are Forever was more of a paycheck film for him like he was making so much money off of that film but Never Say Never Again it felt like he wanted to come back to this I was reading an article right before doing this review I, I wanted to know why Sean Connery came back and there was a quote that he said which I think is both really funny like it's a strange quote but then at the same time it makes me feel like he wanted to be back and so his quote was it's really dense in terms of the story and subplot and texture it's like a detective story and you have to and I have to take quite a bit of responsibility for that so and and so it seems like he, even though he did make a, quite a few dollars he made like five million dollars off of this movie which is pretty good and I won't lie I would be happy with that but it seems like a part of him did want to go back his wife convinced him to come back as well I also find that quote really funny however because this movie is just Thunderball reskinned like this movie has definitely less action it has a lower budget I heard the movie only has like a 36 million dollar budget and I'm sure Thunderball's budget was a lot more because that movie felt very grand but yeah this movie is basically just Thunderball reskinned obviously there are things that are different in this movie but a lot of the main plot points and it's based off of the Thunderball book itself and so I think it's funny that he's like the story is really dense in terms of this and this and this when he's already done a movie based on the same story and I don't know maybe it's because he said that because the movie was going to be filmed differently it was going to be a little bit slower paced it was going to be not as wacky the gadgets were going to be as crazy like maybe he was saying that because it was going to be a more down-to-earth detective story but then at the same time he still has like some of these crazy goofy gadgets in this film like the jetpack stuff so i don't really understand the quote but it does make me feel like he actually wanted to return his bond and you could feel it for sure in the movie or at least i felt that he was actually enjoying himself playing this character one more time and so I enjoyed myself a lot more. I thought there were definitely some good moments of this movie. I mean, I think Sean Connery is always great. I think he was a highlight whenever he was in it. Number 12 as well, I think played by Barbara Carrera. 
I think she was amazing and I enjoyed every single sequence that she was in. Her outfits were incredible. I thought there were some moments of like reveals to characters. I thought some of those moments were done really, really well. The tango sequence where Bond tells Domino that her brother has died or that her brother has been killed and the tango's going on and the music gets more intense and more intense and they're dancing and you can see like her emotions and she kind of starts falling out of the dancing and stuff. Like I thought that was a very good sequence, a very good reveal sequence because of how much tension it brought up. I thought the effects in this movie were really good. The missile effects when they were flying a car across the land reminded me of Superman, the first Superman movie where the where Superman is flying across and it reminded me of that because in that Superman movie I was saying that the effects look really good because the blue screen that Superman is on, like the camera, is doing the same movements that Superman is doing so they feel connected instead of separate. And the missiles in this at the start of the film when they're flying across the land, when the missiles turn left or dip down or dip up or turn right, the screen would dip down or turn left with the missiles. And so it was really cool to see that. But yeah, there were definitely things that felt a little off about this movie. Obviously no gun barrel sequence, which was very disappointing. No opening title sequence, which was also very disappointing. Like, I don't know, it's just, it's just not a James Bond movie. Like this was a cool detective movie with the guy James Bond with the character James Bond in it, but it's just not a James Bond movie without three things. You need, because anyone can play James Bond, that doesn't matter. Anyone can play James Bond for the most part. You need the gun barrel sequence at the start, you need the title sequence, the super intricate title sequence after the opening, and you need the James Bond theme song. There are three things that a James Bond movie needs, and that's what makes a James Bond movie a James Bond movie instead of just your average spy thriller, because let's be honest, some of the James Bond movies aren't that good, and if you watch them and they didn't have those three things, you'd go, this is just your typical spy film, but since it has those three things, you're like, oh, this is James Bond, and even though it's average, I'm still enjoying myself. That's, that's I mean, that's how I see them at least and this movie didn't have any of those like it was still James Bond he still had his vodka martinis shaken not stirred he still acted like James Bond he acted like a Sean Connery James Bond he was still like a honey with the ladies and stuff like that he was still personified James Bond but the movie itself the tone of the movie the feel of the movie it just lacked that extra thing that makes a James Bond movie a James Bond movie. And I really noticed it in the film when I couldn't hear the James Bond score. And it was during the car chase, the motorcycle car chase, and the score, there's no score in this, they're driving around and stuff, and there's some cool things, and then the score hits. And in most James Bond movies, I mean, in every James Bond movie, that would be the James Bond theme song, and it would be epic. And the music in this movie was decent but it wasn't James, the James Bond theme song was nowhere to be seen. And so it just kind of, it was almost disappointing because you kind of come to expect these things and it just didn't happen. Also, I thought the final act of this film was just not great at all. This review was way different than my other reviews. Usually I go into like, like, I don't know, I'm just kind of spouting things at this point. Like usually I have like a kind of a structure and I go from reviews, like critic and audience scores reviews to music and then to things. But I've just kind of been spouting for seven minutes now. So I'm very sorry about that. But I do think that the third act of this film was not the greatest. I just, it didn't have a good, lot of tension in it. It was just a lot of shooting and James Bond was just kind of hiding and it was cool. Some of the explosions were cool and stuff, but it lacked the tension that some of the other big battles have in the other James Bond films. And then the disarming of the bomb sequence was probably one of the most disappointing endings to a James Bond movie that I think I've ever seen. One of the most lackluster endings that I think I've ever seen. They're swimming around. The fight is decent. It's not great. You know, like all of the other underwater fights and all the other James Bond movies I think were better than this. Like it was filmed well. It just wasn't that exciting. Where did the other guards go? Why was he all alone with his nuclear bomb? A lot of questions to be asked here. But he gets pinned against the wall and you think that James Bond's gonna struggle with the bomb. You know, you think that the bomb's gonna have a timer or something, or it's gonna be very difficult to disarm, but he just opens the computer, he presses a few buttons, he closes it, it's over. You know, the music doesn't swell into this really long crescendo and then a silence doesn't drop as he's sweating and stuff like that. And, you know, like there was no intensity to it. It just ended, it was there and then it ended. And it just, it lacked up the punch to make the sequence kind of last. 
as a lot of other finales of James Bond kind of contain. So yeah, I guess getting into the reviews of this movie now, which I usually do at the very start of my review, but I'm going to be doing them at about the 9 minute mark. So 6.1 out of 10 on IMDb and 70% Rotten Tomatoes. So critics seem to really like this movie. Audiences pretty mid on this movie. I, I'm with the audience on this one. I would say it's a pretty mid movie. I think that there were definitely moments that I enjoyed, as I've just said, and there are definitely moments, as I've also just said, that I disliked. The music of this movie as well, I thought was just just okay. I wasn't really invested in any of the soundtrack. Like in a lot of the earlier Sean Connery movies, the soundtrack was great because the James Bond theme was in it and that was about it. It's only been later on like Sean Connery's last movie or last two movies and then a lot of Roger Moore's movies, especially Roger Moore's last two or three films, where the score for James Bond has become as good as the film or has become as legendary as the film. You know, you don't just have the James Bond theme song over everything Thing. you actually have this really intense beautiful orchestral score and sometimes it can be haunting and beautiful and in the old Sean Connery movies that was never the case it was just the James Bond theme it was epic but Roger Moore's era especially has created some very intricate scores that have worked really well with the movies and the themes of the films this one just kind of went back to Sean Connery's first films and even and it didn't except it didn't include the James Bond theme song and you know so I felt like the music was just felt very generic to me it didn't excite me too much there were only like one or two moments where the music I was like okay the music's exciting me a little bit okay 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 there are only one or two moments like that the rest of it it was just there it it worked to kind of I guess make the action sequences better because it did add a little bit of excitement but I never felt excited I was never like oh I'm, I'm hyped because the music is hyped like that never happened to me in this film I do think that the song for this movie though was pretty good I don't think it was my favorite James Bond so song but I, I quite liked it actually I liked the slowness of it and just the the trumpet solo that was kind of at the end of the song as well I just I really enjoyed never say never again's song and I guess the song is just called never say never again as well I also thought the action sequences were done pretty well in this movie I really liked just the wide shots there weren't like a lot of close like shaky cams like we got in on Her Majesty's Secret Service it was pretty wide shots and you just get to see James Bond fighting and stuff and the camera the camera wouldn't move too much so it wasn't super kinetic but it was still a lot of fun especially because they were pretty long takes for some of them like when that guy is chasing him in the hospital at the start of the movie and they're just at the table and they're kind of skimming around the table skimming is now a new word that I just created they're like shimmering shimming shimmering shimmering you know you know what I'm trying to say right they're kind of moving around the table and the take just keeps going it keeps going and they keep moving 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 and the James Bond kicks him in the nuts and then throws water in his face or the other way around but you know it's really nice to see these really long takes it's it was cool action it was fun action and I like that I could see everything I did like the way it was filmed I think the underwater sequences were filmed really well as well they were very clear even the dark moments especially the fight at the end which was in a cave with almost no light I thought it was going to be pretty difficult to see what was going on but for the most part I found it really easy to see what was going on and I think that's I think that was really cool like I don't think the action sequences were as good as Thunderball but that's probably because Thunderball's action sequences underwater especially were so grand there were so many people involved with that and it was, it was just like the beautiful water, like nice crisp blue water. You could really see everyone stand out. This was like a one-on-one -on -one fight in the dark. I still thought it was filmed really well. I didn't think it was the most exciting fight, but I thought the filmmaking behind it was really good. Also, the costumes in this movie were amazing, especially for number 12. Her outfits were phenomenal. They were a joy to see. And when she blew up, I was actually kind of sad because I really enjoyed her character. She was like, she was one of the reasons why I was really enjoying the movie up to that point, just because she was so much fun. She was just so evil for the sake of being evil. And because she was saying that she was like the perfect, she wasn't even saying she was basically the perfect woman. She was saying she was the best at everything, that she was the perfect being on the planet. It. I, do, I don't know I really enjoyed her character and I guess I'll get to her in a sec when I do the cast but I was just talking about her outfits her outfits her outfits made my day whatever like she was like a hit pirate at one point she had like some cool hat and some cool like shirt at another point like her outfits were great also it didn't feel like Spectre needed to be in this movie at all like they got Max von Sydow or something like that that's is that's how you say his name as 
Blofeld, and he's such a good actor, but he was only in the movie for like five minutes of the two hours and 14 minutes runtime. And so I was a little disappointed by that uh, because I was expecting more Spectre, and I felt like if you would just cut Spectre completely out of this movie and you made Maximilian the his own antagonist, his had his own reasons for stealing these nuclear bombs, the movie would have been the exact same. And getting into the cast now, I'm going to talk about Sean Connery, Kim Bassinger, Barbara Carrera, and Claus Maria Brandor. So Claus Maria Brandor as Maximilian. I thought he was really fun in this movie. I enjoyed him more the second half of the movie than the first half of the movie. I thought he was very boring the first half of the movie. I don't know. He was a little scary. He was a little intimidating. He became more intimidating to me in the second half of the movie, but I still thought he was just kind of a fairly bland person you know he was just working for Spectre he had the bombs he didn't want Domino to leave him and to be with Sean Connery and stuff like that but I still had fun with him I just thought he was he was a little bit boring I could have used more intensity from him Barbara Carrera as Fatima Blush aka aka number 12 she was so fun she was probably my favorite character in this movie behind Sean Connery. She was just like a joy to watch, like the evilness that she had, the way she just kept trying to kill James Bond, kept trying to capture him with these different moments, her death where she explodes, like so many cool things, her outfits, like, I don't know. She didn't have that. She didn't have any character development. She was just like the henchman basically, but she was so much fun. And she, as she kind of owned every scene that she was in. She almost like stole the show. She was trying so hard. I really, really enjoyed her character a lot. Kim Bassinger, as Domino. I really enjoyed her. I did think that she was a little bland though, just like Maximilian, just like the guy she was trying to get away from. I thought that she was just kind of, she was just kind of there, you know, like I don't feel like she added too much to sequences. She was just the love interest and she was really, she was pretty cool, but at the same time, like, I don't know, there are there are other Bond girls that I think were way cooler than her and that actually did a lot of things to help with the plot. And it didn't really feel like she did much other than just to be the love interest and to be like the conflict between Sean Connery and Maximilian. And finally, Sean Connery as James Bond, his final outing as the titular character, really, really enjoyed his performance in this one. It may, I don't know, I, don't, I have to rewatch the Sean Connery ones now. It's been like two months since I've seen them, but I think this was one of maybe not one of my favorites but it was definitely better than diamonds are forever like he actually felt like he wanted to be james bond in this i quite liked the mellowness of this movie it kind of got it enabled him to act a little bit more to have a little bit more emotion with his character and i really did enjoy that quite a bit and i just like i don't know it wasn't weird to see sean connery in this movie as james bond because of the i just watched all of roger moore's like seven films it just felt very natural. It felt like he was very natural in this role. And I, I really, really like him as James Bond. And I'm glad he got one more movie. I am glad that I saw this. And I'm glad that he got one more film to play James Bond. Because I think he does deserve it. And yeah, that is my reaction and review to Never Say Never Again, the 1983 James Bond film, unofficial James Bond film. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. But next time we go into, I think it's Timothy Dalton. I think that's the next James Bond. I don't know how many movies he has because I think there's only Timothy Dalton and then Pierce Brosnan left, but I'm not 100% sure. There could be someone else in between, but I think there's only two left. Kind of sad that I'm nearing the end of James Bond, but I'm excited to see their films. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction.